Hey YouTube, today we're going to talk about whether technology has made the 9mm cartridge superior to the 45 cartridge. And before we get started, I'm going to let you know that these pistols here that I'm going to use as examples here don't have anything in them and we are clear to make this video. So the subject matter for today is I've covered it briefly before and a lot of people's covered this here and there and I'm going to include in the description of this video a fellow youtubers video of ballistic testing these two ammunitions so what are we talking about today we're going to talk about the 45 acp and our example here is a full-size glock 21 and um the nine millimeter we're going to use is a full-size glock 17 and nine millimeter this one's 45 and this one's nine millimeter so there's a lot of arguments for um positive and negative for either one of these and they're both very popular and these are the most two common calibers that people use in handgun defense because that's what you use a handgun for and the first argument is going to be capacity and in these full-size um guns here the 45 is going to hold 13 rounds of 45 as opposed to 17 rounds and the nine millimeter that's going to be the number one argument is going to be your capacity size and my rebuttal to this argument is most times that you have to deploy a handgun the number one thing you're trying to do is to get to your rifle Unless you're in a self-defense situation, like in a store or in your home or something like that. And a majority of the times it's been proven that it takes about three rounds to stop any threat on anything. So the capacity thing really isn't that big an issue to me. Now, when you get into carry sizes, these capacities are going to be dropped down quite a bit. But we're using full-size ones here. Using full-size handguns, full-size length barrels, and everything like that. Now... I've listened to it for years now. I favored the 45 ACP because I think it's a superior round. And a lot of people have gone the 9mm route because they think it's a superior round. And I'm going to show you my argument why I think these people are wrong. Now, when I get into this, I'm going to let you know that I do not dislike the 9mm uh, cartridge. I think it's a great cartridge. I think it's come a long way. However... I choose to pick something that's a little bit more superior when I'm dependent on my life and I use these guns for protection and hopefully this video clears things up. Now, a couple things that I've comments that I've gotten is that a 45 will not go through a car door because a guy made a YouTube short like right after one of mine and shot both of them into a car door the 45 didn't go through. Folks, you cannot believe everything you said. Those very people that watched this YouTube short, and I think it was funny, I think it was awesome, the guy got quite a bit of views on this, got great success, but seeing that a 45 will not go through a car door is just ludicrous, and the people that argue because they watch the YouTube video will not sit behind the car door and let somebody fire a 45 at them, if what that guy said was true, then you should be safe. And it's just simply not true, folks. They'll both go through a car door. A car door is thin sheet metal, and it's not going to stop either one of these rounds. Second thing I need to make you aware of is handgun. handguns are exactly what they are. They're handguns. They're never going to measure up to the ballistics and the damage that a rifle does. So the ultimate way to um, use a handgun is use it as a means to get to your rifle and when you get to your rifle you shouldn't even use these anymore but if the threat is immediate and you just need a handgun you just need to pick the one that works for you and hopefully this video helps you so the ammunition that we're going to use today is my favorite type of ammunition this is hornady ammunition now these two happen to be hornady um, critical defense ammo Harmony critical defense ammo is not meant to over penetrate, go through stuff. It's meant for expansion and energy upon hitting the target. That's what defense ammo is mean. You don't need to go through five people. You need to go into one person, a two-legged <laughs> perpetrator, and that's what we're going to use. So we're going to use a little bit of data here, and um, we're gonna we're gonna show you what these things are capable of doing so on 
Hornady's website, and I'm going to show you that I'm reading right off of Hornady's websites here. We're going to use, we're going to look at the 9mm. Now, the 9mm was shot out of a test barrel that was 4 inches long. Because I knew people get into barrel sizes too, and it really doesn't matter that much when you're getting into the handguns. And I'm going to show you right here the, the actual the actual data results. The muzzle velocity on a defense a defense bullet is 1135 feet per second at the muzzle and that is producing 329 foot pounds of energy upon impact. Now when you get it we're going to get stretch it out to 100 yards where you should not be using <laughs> at all a handgun and that velocity has dropped down to 949 and 230 foot pounds of energy when you compare that to a 45 the same thing the muzzle velocity is 900 foot pounds of energy or uh, feet per second which is you know 150 less or so 150 200 less than the nine millimeters so it's moving a little bit faster but the um, energy is 333 um, pounds of energy now that's shooting out of a three inch barrel and when you stretch that to a hundred yards you'll notice that it starts to tighten up a little bit here so there's really not a huge amount of difference but when you're using this type of ammunition we're not going for velocity we're going for how much damage you can do on a on a threat you know we're looking for um, terminal terminal damage that you do when you hit it so we're going to go into the next part of this we're going to look at your um expansion on this now on a 45 i'm going to ha have it written right here you can expect to get 1.2 to 1.6 times expansion on a bullet i'm shooting out of a 45 now i'm not a mathematician but 0.45 times we're going to use the high side of this 1.6 you're going to get a 0.72 wound channel you know that's three quarters of an inch on the nine millimeter the same thing you're going to get a 0.56 so when you expand fully expanded nine millimeter critical defense bullet expands open to about the size of a 45. now when you're using self-defense the goal is to put a larger hole into something to cause more damage so you hit vital organs that's that's the goal and you're never going to be able to make a nine millimeter bullet expand open as big as a 45 it's never going to happen so your um your chances of stopping the threat and hitting the vital um, part inside of one's body is better with a 45 than it's going to be with the nine millimeter now with your um other arguments that y'all have for the nine millimeter is the recoil the recoil is not even a thing if you practice with either one of these guns they both have recoil folks the 45 is going to have a little bit more felt recoil but it all depends on how you train with them and if you do if you refuse to train with the weapon that you're trying to use to defend yourself you're not going to be successful with either one of them with a handgun it's all about shot placement and if you're not if you're under stress and it's a high tent situation you have a better chance of hitting something with a 45 because it makes a larger hole and it's a larger wound cavity that goes into whatever you're shooting at the nine millimeter you have to be a little bit more precise now the advantage is you're going to have you know three or four more shots when you shoot in nine millimeter so maybe that might be a thing but i'm going to go with something that's going to make more of an impact have more energy and everything on the first shot usually the first shot's going to end it but you know there are these situations where you're going to have to use two and three shots, you know, to stop whatever it is. Now, the part that I really wanted to talk about is it's all in what kind of ammunition you use, folks. It's all it's all in it. So when you do the same type of ammunition and you compare apples to apples, the 45 is still going to be a little bit more powerful. It's still going to have to put four foot pounds of energy. It's going to have more energy at distance. It's going to make a larger wound cavity. It's going to cause more damage, period. It's the end of the story. Now, one of the other big arguments that I hear about people talk about is penetration. Well, penetration really doesn't matter when you're using for self-defense. Do, do you really care whether it goes out the backside of somebody or the backside of anything? 
does that really make a difference? It doesn't to me, folks. I want it to stay in the person and cause a large cavity and drop them. And when you use defense ammo, it usually expands. And the larger that it expands, the more terminal damage it's going to do when it enters the person or the threat or whatever it is that you're shooting at. But if we want to talk about penetration, we're going to look at another one, and we're going to look at Critical Duty, made by the same company. This is Critical Duty, and we're going to start off with the 9mm. This is now uh, the 9mm at the muzzle, if you use Critical Duty, and this isn't meant for expansion at all. The velocity is going to be 1,070 feet per second. And the energy that is expelled at that is going to be 343 foot pounds. Now, when you stretch it out to a thousand yards, or I'm sorry, a hundred yards, it's going to be 958, and the energy drops down to 275. And that is out of a four inch barrel, it's a shorter barrel. Now, out of a, um, out of a 45, at the muzzle, you're going to get 975 feet per second, and the energy is sufficiently more. It's 464 versus 343. At 100 yards, it drops down to 887. The energy is still more on the 45 than it is at the muzzle on a 9mm at 384. 384 foot pounds of energy upon impact at 100 yards versus 343 um, foot pounds at the muzzle on a nine millimeter. So there's absolutely zero doubt that the 45 is a more powerful cartridge whatsoever. Now, when we talk about this, this um, rumor that goes around, people call stopping power. And a lot of nine millimeter says People say that that's all a myth. It's not a myth, folks. What it is, is the amount of energy that is expelled from the cartridge upon impact is what they call stopping power. That is just another term, it's an old term for people to say that. Now, when you have over 150 pounds of energy more expelling from a cartridge when it hits something that stops somebody more than the smaller projectile now you can choose to go either route you can choose to go with the 45 or the 9 millimeter this one's when you use defense ammo that's supposed to open up you know hollow points of any type and this is just what i choose to use this is going to make the larger hole this one's gonna now the advancement in technology has made this quite a bit more powerful than it used to be but it will open up about the size of what this one starts at and the penetration thing does not matter as long as they both enter the threat that's going into but if you are a penetration person you can get the same no in critical duty and the 45 will out penetrate the um, nine millimeter and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a link in the description of this video showing 9mm critical duty versus 45 critical duty shooting into ballistic jelly. And you will see it's clear as day on there that the 45 goes further. Now, what does all this matter? It really doesn't matter, folks. You pick what you want to pick. You're going to always pick what you're more comfortable with. And if you're a person that doesn't like to go to the range and train and you don't know how to control recoil on them, maybe the 9mm is a little bit better for you. It's a little bit softer shooting and everything, but you know, you're probably going to need those extra rounds if you get put in there. If you don't mind training and you train with your weapon, you're very proficient with it, this is the gun that you need to go with. It's going to be the more powerful one. It's going to take less rounds to, um, to stop the threat and some more powerful round. Now, if you're a if you're a penetration person, you don't need to be using these type of hollow point bullets and stuff like that. You need to use something like a hardball or um, that critical duty and stuff. And both of them is going to go clean through the target. Now, it's not going to expand as much, so if you're if you're wanting a larger wound channel, the 45 is probably going to be the way to go. If you want to go straight through something and you're going to use the critical duty, you might want to pick the 45. It's going to make a larger wound channel. It's going to have a better chance of hitting vital areas than the smaller 9mm bullet. Now, the cost thing. People start talking about the cost of ammo at the practice. Well, it usually costs... 
to shoot a 45. It usually costs wide right around double, give or take. I know there's there's deals out there, but it usually costs about double. But is cost really a, a, something that should be figured into saving your life? I don't think so. I don't think you should worry about cost about it. If you cannot afford to shoot a 45, pick the nine millimeter. I mean, there's no there's no shame in not being able to afford something, but nine millimeter will still get the job done. But if you want the complete superior cartridge and you don't mind spending a little bit extra money on practice, the 45 is probably the better option here. The science proves it, folks. You can see it on everything. I know there's a couple YouTubers that have done these videos it said that they're about even or the nine millimeters better but it's just simply not the reason that the 45 cartridge even exist is a bullet of this size was not getting it done back in you know the early 1900s and they had to develop something that kept people from advancing once they were hit by a weapon and it's just very, it's just as simple as that the other side you know chose to stick with the smaller cartridge and it's not the complete reason, but you know they they really came out on the losing side of it. The 45 prevailed. Now the other reason is the um, reason that the military and the FBI and all that uses nine millimeter is a NATO round. It's universally accepted across the entire world. You know it's very um, universal. The main reason that they do that is cost. And folks, if you if you follow what the government does, they're not really good with money. If you if you want to just follow and use nine millimeter and be a sheep, just because the government says you should, well, you should also rack your credit cards up and not pay your bills, because that's also what the government does. They're not very good with finances, and that's why the country um, has such a large deficit, a spending deficit. I don't choose to do that. I choose to um, I choose to invest wisely in stuff that I have, and I own both of them. I'm not going to talk bad about either one of them. I'm just telling you, the choice that I use in a handgun in any type of situation, home defense or concealed carry, is going to be a 45. It's always going to be that over the nine millimeter. Now you can get into some of these exotic rounds that have come out in recent years. I see recent years, you know, within the past 20 years or so, because these are both very old cartridges. These are proven, proven um, characters here. You can get into the five sevens or the 10 millimeters and stuff like that. But you also got to understand in Doomsday, where are you going to find ammunition for this? It's hard to find it anyway with just going out and looking. You can't go to you just your every day, every store usually and pick up 10 millimeter or 5.7. I know, I know there's a lot of stores that have it, but I'm talking about common ammunitions. These are everywhere. And the 10 millimeter and the 5.7s and all the crazy stuff that they have out today, these super ammunitions. It's just not as readily available, and it is very costly for those that um, that like to talk about costs. But anyway, I just wanted to show you some data. I want to put this link to this video. I encourage you to please watch it and tell me what you think. But um, it clearly shows there is a winner when it comes to penetration, foot-pounds of energy, all that in the 45 versus the 9mm. The 45 usually wins regardless of what everybody wants to think. A lot of people, they, the people that mainly argue on the internet about either one of these is that's the only one that they have. <laughs> like the 9mm people, they have one 9mm piece pistol and they're convinced that it's the best thing on the earth and vice versa with the 45. You're taking this, you're taking this information right now from a guy that has both. I could pick either one of these today and the one that I'm going to choose to go with is going to be the 45 every single time. Now I understand that these aren't carry concealed guns. I picked the full size ones because these can be used as duty weapons, as home defense weapons, and some people can even conceal these large full size pistols. But anyway folks, I encourage you to watch the video of the, uh, the fellow YouTuber with his um, ballistics jelly test and just listen to the information read the facts before you go on the internet and bash something that you have no idea what you're talking about i've showed you facts i've showed you straight from the manufacturer's websites 
what the um, specs are of both of them, and that is just Hornady because that's what I use. Thank you very much for listening to me today, watching my video, and you folks have a great day.